Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent today than it ever has been. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. One day closer looking into our Savior's face. So guys, um, today's going to be a little bit longer. Um, I looked at my um, list of videos and one of them was deleted. Now this happens on YouTube. Um, it's happened a little bit more frequently lately. I don't know why, but sometimes I will answer some of y'all's questions and I'll look back and um, those answers will be deleted. And sometimes entire videos will be deleted and um, doesn't happen a lot, but one of my last ones was deleted on the imminency of the rapture. And because this is very important, not only to me, but to Jesus Christ, I believe, I am going to share it again, okay? Because I know that everybody's looking at dates and which is, um, whatever, you know, whatever you want to do, that's fine. I'm looking at today. Um, yes, God knows the beginning from the end. That is true. He's God. All right. But the imminency of the rapture is paramount. The imminency of the rapture means that rapture could happen before this video is over. And yes, we are in the season of the rapture. We know that everything is converging so very rapidly according to the Bible and according to Bible prophecy. But I am not going to set a date ahead of time I am not going to let, the Bible says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I don't know if you all heard that video that was deleted. I don't even know the name of it, but um, I have looked back. I saved my notes, thank God. But um, I have looked back and um, I'm going to go over some of those notes. So sit back, get your coffee, whatever. Um, sit back. It's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a little bit um, more instructional um, and what the Lord has given me today. This is my own journal. You know, I am into journaling. As you know, this is where my books come from. This is where the meat of everything comes from, guys. I promise you that if you sit down 10, 15 minutes a day with the Lord, the Holy Spirit is the mighty counselor, okay? He will show you everything, things that you never knew, not only about scripture, but about your own heart, okay? The Bible says the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it but God, okay? And the spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord, the Bible says. So we don't know ourselves as we think we do. So it's important, paramount, that we sit down before the Lord. So yes, the rapture could happen today. And before I share, out of my own journal here, and I have underlined and yellowed out things and to share, and who knows if this video will get deleted. Um, you know, we know that the heat on the street is the rapture is, um, you know, in September, in July, whatever. And it, it very well could be. It very well could be. And I'm not taking away from that. But what I am saying is don't take away from the imminency of the rapture on this very day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says, when you see that day approaching, lift up your heads and look up for your redemption draws nigh. And we see that day approaching, okay? And if you're not ready for that day, it, Jesus said you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That the only way to the Father is through the Son. And so it's not Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, whoever, fill in the blank. Um, your own prayers, your own good works. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is a gift, an irretractable gift. 
For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. And those of us who are saved, born again, immediately and eternally, we are sealed at the moment of salvation. Those of us who are born again, there's a lot of us out there running around, um, feeling condemned. There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And at the moment of salvation, we are positionally actually with Christ seated at the right hand of the Father. And there goes Tootsie. There's a dog barking, of course. Um, Tootsie, say hi. Or she's going to be on guard now. She hears a dog. She loves sleeping, as a lot of us are. But, um, you know, this channel has a twofold purpose. To locate and educate those prodigals who are out there, who are deceived, who have believed the liar's lie. There is a real Satan, a real and literal Satan, who I was a prodigal for many years. I had walked away for many years. The Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay, and we believe the liar's lie. You know, he gives us these, you know, agendas in our ear. And, you know, we we, we run with it. And we, we believe these false identities that he hooks us up with in our head. And we run with that. And that's not even who we are. Not anywhere near who we are. Yet all along, we're born again. Okay, so sin will bring us to our knees. And it does bring us to our knees. And when it does, God is there waiting all along. So this channel is to locate and educate those prodigals at risk. At risk for what? Death, destruction, and lies. Because Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, he is a liar and the father of all lies. And for those who are completely lost, apart, eternally separated from God at this moment. Those who are dead in sin at this moment because we are born into this condition called sin. We are actually conceived in this condition called sin. And Jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So if you are not saved and you are within the sound of my voice, it is imperative that you get saved. And you can't do that by yourself. Your good works can't get you into heaven. It's not a, a scale of where God measures the bad and the good. And you say, uh, he say, okay, well, you've done enough good that you can just come on in. It's not like that. Only the blood of Jesus Christ could get us into the kingdom of heaven. So the gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, one through four, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried. And on the third day rose again, according to scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. How do we get there? How do we get from point A to point B, knowing that we are born again, cleansed in the blood of Jesus, and that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, which is the most important thing in this entire world, that we know, that we know that we know that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There is no other, nothing more important than knowing that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. A is to simply admit, yeah, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, not some of us. The wages of our sin is death, eternal separation from God. B is to believe, and this is key, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And C, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might be saved, will be saved. Okay, and once you're born again, you are eternally born again, adopted into God's very own family, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Okay, and then you open the word and let the Holy Spirit lead the way. Let him show you because he will show you. He's the counselor. He's your best friend. He will continue to guide you and lead you in the way that you should go. Okay, so to that two groups of people, there is no other 
any other group of people. And you know, guys, what do we expect sinners to do? Sin. I didn't expect sin to be this corrupt and this fallen. I didn't expect to see this level of evil in my life ever, ever. Mm -mm. I never expected this. But yet, what do we expect sinners to do? Sin. So let us not be of the hypocrisy, the hypocrites in church, because that's what keeps people from church, really. But know that Jesus Christ is not religious. And um, this is not joining a church. It's not, um, you know, we are not a brick and mortar church. We are the church worldwide. We are born again, set apart the ecclesia, the church of Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, it's not about signing a card, uh, completing uh, a program. You are born again eternally. Destined for heaven. Rapture ready. There is nothing that you need to do to be rapture ready. At the moment you become born again, you are rapture ready. You might be a prodigal out there in sin, but you will be raptured. And I'm not advocating for sin here because sin will bring you to your knees. Okay, so... Let's go over this. Let me read a poem first because I'm going to read out of my second book, My Poetic Justice. And these are all just poems that were composed out of my journaling that the Lord told me to write. Okay. So whatever storms you're going through right now, and we're all going through some storms, let me tell you. Myself included. Present company included. And and our prodigals, let me encourage you, don't focus on the circumstances, on their circumstances. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Don't for forfeit your strength to engage in your prodigal's emotional struggle or nonsense that comes with being in sin. Okay, don't do that. Don't forfeit your peace. For your prodigal's nonsense, okay? You got to learn how to divide yourself from that and protect yourself from that. There has to be a boundary between you and your prodigal. Doesn't mean you love them any less. I mean, we pray for them and I pray for every prodigal that is represented on this channel and every prodigal's family represented on this channel. But we don't engage ourselves in their storm, okay? we might just get blown away this is called the perfect storm don't focus on the storm no matter how high the waves circumstances may be uncomfortable but remember you are eternally safe command all emotions to be silenced don't let fear into the boat the captain of this vessel has promised to keep his vessel afloat if we allow our flesh to doubt indeed we will soon sink allowing ourselves to grow bitter instead of trusting the King of Kings. Arise, my soul, the captain is faithful, and this storm shall soon be done. We will behold the beauty of our God through the eyes of the risen sun, S-O-N. James 1.8, but let him ask in faith. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the waves. And I pray for wisdom for each and every one of us on this channel. Subscribe to this channel each and every day. Okay, and this one is for the unbelievers and the people that we look into their eyes every day that we know that they're not believers. And it's called Silent Scream. Welcome to my world. Can you hear my soul screaming? I know I appear to be laughing. Have I fooled you into believing? Let's walk beyond the picket fence painted so pretty and white. Have, I purpose, have you purposely overlooked the fact that my house doesn't have a light? Yes, as you admire my walls of marble and floors of costly gold, I am dying to hear the truth that you Christians alone hold. I have welcomed you into my house. Can you hear what I'm not saying? For years, my hate has kept you people away when I criticize your preaching and praying. Please don't let me fool you by my wealth or intellect. I'm on my road to hell, right along with some of this world's best. If somehow you've gained access into my world of selfish ambition, perhaps you are the king's ambassador 
equipped for this difficult mission. Don't gaze at me with envy, for you have so much more than I. The brilliance of that light in your house truly makes me want to cry. I try not to tim intimidate you with my arrogance and hate, but Satan uses it as a tool to keep you weak Christians away. Come a little closer. Can you hear my heart crying? For years, I have been tied up and bound to the accuser's constant lying. I guess you haven't seen my dungeons or the skeletons in my closet. I, I really have deceived you, and I'm disappointed that you bought it. If you look into my eyes, the windows of my soul, you'll see a desperate spirit crying out to be made whole. You'll see an unlit candle on the table beside my grave that only the Son of God can light resurrect and save. Please don't let me fool you. I'm literally dying to find my way. I need you like a blind man in darkness desperately needs the light of day. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord that sheds light on one's most inner being. Okay, so when you're looking into those people's eyes that look so arrogant and hateful, and critical. No, they don't even have a candle lit. They are walking in complete darkness. And we are the only Bible that they may ever pick up. Just know that. All right, so from my journaling, okay, that video that was deleted. Okay, so how close are we? I'm not sure what the title of it was. I think it's How Close Are We? I'm not. In the twinkling of an eye, we are to be watching and waiting for the rapture of Jesus Christ. Okay? The Bible commands us to watch and wait. All right? Okay, Daniel 9.27. We know that Daniel 9.27 begins the seven-year tribulation. Is it the summit that is going to happen in New York September 18th and the 19th. Who knows? It could be today. Okay. I'm not predicting a future event. Okay. That has gotten many Christians in trouble. All right. And has grown many hearts weary to watch and wait for a date that wasn't today. All right. So it's exciting. I'm not trying to take our excitement away, but the Lord has put this on my heart strongly today that we need to be watching and waiting for him today today okay are you rapture ready if you're born again yes you are nothing needs to happen jesus told us to lift lift up our heads and look up for our redemption draws nigh i don't set dates as i have told you on this channel many times we should be simply setting a date with Jesus every day. That's the extent of my date setting. I'm expecting him today. I'm looking forward to specific dates. Um, I mean, and looking forward to a specific date nullifies the imminency of the rapture, doesn't it? And that leads often to a weary heart, sometimes causing discouragement and depression. And the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. To defer in Hebrew is to postpone or delay. In the Greek is to put off for oneself, interestingly enough. So when we're setting dates ahead of today, we're canceling out the imminency of the rapture today. Isn't that correct? If I'm saying the rapture is going to happen in September or even July, at you know, as these dates are, and I mean, I've heard it all and I've listened to it all and I've listened to many things in the past since I have been watching and waiting and I have been watching and waiting for years, okay? And I've heard these dates and, um, and it's exciting, it's exhilarating, but it's exhilarating today for me to know that Jesus could come back today and I'm expecting him today, okay? So for me to anticipate that he's coming back in a couple months nullifies the imminency of today. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm expecting him today. If he doesn't come back today, that's okay. Then he comes back when I open up my eyes tomorrow. 
I'm expecting him tomorrow, okay? And every day thereafter. That's how I live my life, with the imminency of Jesus Christ's return. Because that's how the Bible tells us to live our life as Christians. Okay, we know that we are in that. The Bible tells us to look for seasons. We are in that season. We know that we are in that window. Um, we know that Israel becoming a nation, May 14, 1948, was a pivotal turn in the countdown of God's prophetic clock. And the regathering of the Jews um, and the doomsday clock, interestingly enough, was reset to 90 seconds to midnight. So in the past, I don't know, however many years, we've had same-sex marriage, gay pride, child trafficking, wars and rumors of war, political tensions, plant the pandemic, the so-called climate change, which is the earth groaning, according to the Bible, the rise of AI, virtual reality, and computer technology, military scoffers and mockers denying the rapture, which is actually a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, the increase in dreams and visions, by Christians, born again believers. That's all over YouTube, all over the internet. Uh, the increase of drugs, fentanyl, um, people calling good evil and evil good. I could go on and on and on with this. I am simply stating biblical facts of why we are in the final moments of the end of this dispensation called grace. And those of us who are awake remnant believers, the remnant church, we know that we know that we know that it could be today. But let's be very cautious, and the Lord keeps putting this in my spirit strongly, cautious about date setting, to not let our hearts grow weary. If these days pass, and the enemy stands laughing, because there are fragile souls, beloved, that trust Christians, strong Christians. Those of us who believe that we're strong Christians out there date setting. Okay. And uh, those of us who believe that we know the Bible so much that we're date setting. Set a date with Jesus Christ every day. Because... That day is going to come, all right? And whether it's that date that many are predicting or not is irrelevant, really, because it could be today. And it could be before that date. And if we're looking ahead of time, we're missing out on what Jesus Christ has for us today. Because although we're not saved by works, we're saved for works, the Bible says in Ephesians. And if we're looking ahead to those dates, and we see everything converging, I agree with that, we see everything converging at a very rapid pace. Not even hourly. I mean now, minute by minute, we're seeing the convergence of Bible prophecy. But if we're looking at a certain date, then we're totally missing the Holy Spirit's voice as to what we should be doing now, today. What he wants us to do. Listening to his still, small voice. What's relevant today? Okay? Okay. So we don't want these fragile souls to be thrown into a pit of depression and discouragement. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. All right, so let us all be patient, waiting, be still, and know that he's God. Be anxious for nothing. To earnestly know in our hearts and believe that he is who he says he is. And he has gone to prepare a place for us that where he is, we may be also. And that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. 
No man knows what that's going to look like. And it could be today. Are you rapture ready? Are your sins past, present, and forget, for, and future forgiven, washed in the blood? Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? And if not, why not? Jesus said, you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And the only way to the Father is through the Son. Tomorrow is not promise, friend. But today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. You may not get another chance. Set a date with Jesus Christ today. And if you're not born again, let today be your spiritual birthday. Okay, so we know that BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, uh, they are going to be enlarging by five more countries. Okay, so that's the 10 kings, maybe. Maybe not. Daniel, 10 toes and Revelation, 10 horns. As you see the day approaching. Okay, the hour we know is very late, guys. It's very exciting in Bible prophecy. And Ephesians 2, 8, 9, the blood of Jesus is our salvation. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. As we see the day approaching, I am looking at today. That needs to be our motto. Today could be the day. For we are not promised tomorrow, guys. Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day, evil is sufficient enough. And worrying about it causes fears and anxiety in the heart. He doesn't want us to worry specifically because he has it all planned. He has it all planned. Okay? And we need to trust him enough that he knows the beginning from the end. And that we don't have a clue what today will bring or what tomorrow will bring. He knows the beginning from the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Psalm 37, 4 tells us to delight ourselves in the Lord and he will give us the desires of our heart. He instills his very plans in our hearts as we delight in him. And if we are looking ahead to the future, how do we delight in him now? James 4, 13 through 15. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city and spend a year there and carry on business and many make money and don't you even know what will, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you should say, if it is the Lord's will, you will be doing this. James was worried that people were wasting their short lives and needing to rearrange their priorities. And often that's what we need to do. Rearrange our priorities. Look to today. Today could be the day of the rapture. Hebrews 3.13 says, But exhort one another today that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Tomorrow is in God's sovereignty, not ours. Jesus demonstrates his peace and comfort today. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and we need his strength today. Again, Proverbs 27, 1 tells us, do not boast about tomorrow for we do not know what tomorrow may bring. God knows the beginning from the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. When the Bible speaks of Christ's return for the church, the bride of Christ, it speaks of the great possibility of that happening today at any moment in the twinkling of an eye. Nothing needs to happen prior to that trumpet sounding. James 5, 8, you also be patient for the coming of the Lord is near. 1 Corinthians 17, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord. Revelation 1, 3, blessed is the one who reads aloud and hears and who keeps what is 
in here for the time is near. You know, Revelation is the only book that promises a blessing to its readers. So blessed the one who reads aloud and hears. So if we read the book of Revelation aloud and hear, because if we're reading it aloud, obviously we're hearing it aloud. Revelation is the only book that re that promises a, a blessing to its readers. Luke 1240, you must also be ready for the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. Could be today. The command be ready implies imminence every day. The second coming is different when Christ defeats his enemies and sets up his kingdom and will not occur until after the tribulation. And we know that the rapture takes place before the tribulation. And we will be there for the appearing of, uh, for the opening of the seals. So Matthew 24, 44, for this reason, you be ready to, for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not think he will. All right, so it was all today the Lord just kept showing me biblical eminence teaches that christ can come back today at this very second and we know that date setting destroys that promise so the rapture is a totally signless event guys and nothing needs to happen nothing so let's not look forward I'm excited. I'm just as anticipated and stoked. I'm anticipating the coming of Jesus and the rapture as y'all are. Um, and remember that Christians will be rewarded for our works at the judgment seat of Christ. It's That has nothing to do with salvation. Our salvation, when Jesus Christ said, it is finished on that cross, to tell us that it was finished. Um, so that has nothing to do with our salvation, the judgment seat of Christ. Um, that's, we're rewarded for looking up today. So those who love his appearing, that means I'm looking up today. We have a crown. We are, we are, he gives us that crown for those who love his appearing. We're looking up, lifting up our heads and looking up for his appearing today and every day that he puts breath in our lungs. Then Christ will, will return with the church after the seven year tribulation and with the hosts of heaven and set up the messianic kingdom on earth for the thousand years. And Antichrist will be cast into the lake of fire and Satan bound for a thousand years and the nations and their representatives will be judged. And we know all that. And Israel will be returned to her land. So we know all that. Um, so that's a different study that... Um, so this is what we're calling the revived Roman Empire, the fourth industrial revolution. All of this is coming, guys. The beast system globally, not just the United States, but globally. This is happening. I mean, if you just go to the UN.org, the website, and check it out, you'll see the 2030 agenda. And just kind of study that. Look at it. Look at it. There's 17 goals. Look at them. Look at them. I mean, if you, if you ask 80% of 90%, probably 99% of the population, they don't know what we're talking about. They don't know who Klaus Schwab is or his right-hand man, Yuval Noah Harari. Um, educate yourself on this, okay? Just go to the site and see who's involved in these things. George Soros, Bill and Melinda Gates, the Rockefellers, just go and see for yourself. Do your own study. Get your own journal. We're not going to be living in harmony with nature. The earth is currently groaning as the Bible states it is groaning. We're in birth pains right now. And as a woman, having had three children of my own, I know that birth pains do not reverse. They just get exponentially faster, quicker, stronger. We have arrived, guys. We have arrived and we don't save our planet or worship mother earth we worship father god and we know this world is coming to a soon and certain end and revelation 3 10 we as christians are kept from the hour of trial 
for the hour of testing that is to come upon this whole world, which is seven year tribulation. So we are pre trip, 100% pre trip. Here, trip. Trying to get over here to see. Huh? Say hi. She's trying to get herself over here. Say hi. So we are 100% pre trib. Pre trib all the way. So don't doubt. We are not appointed to wrath, guys. We're not appointed to wrath. Jesus delivers us from the wrath to come. Not all that happened, everything that happened on the cross, it is finished. To tell us died when Jesus said it is finished. And Titus 2.13, we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, so I want you all to be looking up today. All right. And it's exciting what's happening with the Agenda 2030. And I agree, it's exciting. And we see the day approaching, but it could be today. Okay, guys, it could be today. Right, Tootsie? Tell them it could be today. She's camera shy. She's a little camera shy. All right, guys, so um, I'm going to let you go 36 minutes. Um, that was just on my heart. I'm going to read you one more poem from my Poetic Justice. And this is called No Sympathy for the Devil. Okay, so you know that everything that the enemy meant for harm, God will choose to use for his own good. And he does that in the life of his own children. So all of your prodigal years, anything that the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it into good. So, my, my, what a big mouth God Almighty has redeemed. My life wasn't as worthless as you made it once seem. I pray that every black sheep within the sound of my voice becomes radically loosened from your grip and able to make a free choice. I bet you never realized when you bound me up in chains that my life would be an instrument to spare others from your pain. I bet you never noticed, Satan, as you pushed me so further into your grave, that my heart was transcribing notes that God in his mercy had saved. I bet it never occurred to you when you tempted me into your land that God would call me to be an eyewitness and one day take the stand. I'm almost compelled to thank you, devil, for pushing me so hard to that ground. For had I not been in the dirt, my, my Savior's mercy I may not have found. So it is in humble adoration I dedicate each word transcribed within these pages to the faithful shepherd of the flock, the lamb ordained before the ages. The rulers of this world could not have known the end of this story. For had they known the great mystery of God, they would not have crucified my Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2 seven and eight we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery the hidden wisdom of which god ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of the age knew for had they known they would not have crucified our lord of glory so guys know that yes we are close to the rapture of the church and it could be today and that's how close we are so be encouraged let your heart rejoice. Sing to the Lord. Um, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Um, make plans, but let the Lord direct your footsteps. Okay? Because um, we are in the final moments, in the final countdown of the end of this dispensation of grace. And if you're not saved, why not? Okay? I mean, you'll be eternally sorry for not getting saved. All right, so guys, until next time, um, keep looking up. I love you guys. I'm praying for each and every one of you and your family and your prodigal. Um, just know that spiritual warfare, uh, yeah, keep your armor on, guys. Ephesians 6, 10, keep your full armor on. Just... It's a spiritual warfare. Bring every thought captive. Know that every thought that comes into your head is not always your thought. Yeah. The enemy's out for blood, okay? But the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from everything. Past, present, and future sins. Okay? So we're covered. Just know that. I love you guys. Till next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws not. God bless you guys.